it's being reported that the Venezuelan gang Trende Aragua began taking control of apartment buildings in Aurora, Colorado last November. While mainstream media and government ignore it, local news is covering it. So now your investigator, Brian Moss, has obtained a confidential report into one of those apartment complexes, and that report says a Venezuelan gang began taking it over in 2023. This is the nine-page report. It was put together by a Denver law firm. Mm -hmm. They say they were hired to look into the Whispering Pines apartments by the building's lenders. Last month, they sent this report to Aurora's mayor, city manager, and police chief. As recently as Tuesday, residents at the Edge apartment complex in Aurora pushed back on reports that a Venezuelan gang had taken over their building. But five miles away at the Whispering Pines, a 54 unit apartment building in Aurora, this detailed letter asking for confidential treatment of the contents shared a different story. It was sent to Aurora officials on August 9th with the investigators saying, the evidence we have reviewed indicates that gang members are engaging in flagrant trespass violations, assaults and battery, human trafficking, sexual abuse of minors, unlawful firearms possession, extortion, and other criminal activities. According to the law firm's report, the Venezuelan gang Trende Aragua has threatened to kill and in certain instances has apparently actively attempted to kill members of Whispering Pines management. The report says a consultant for the property management company was severely beaten and stomped by gang members and was hospitalized. The alleged incident recorded by building cameras with screenshots attached to the letter. The report relies on a property manager who said that gang members allegedly stabbed a Whispering Pines resident for refusing to pay rent to the gang. He also told the investigators the takeover began last November. The report recounts that this summer, the gang approached the property manager and told him they would help him out in exchange for half of all the rent that he collected. The law firm that wrote the report called that an organized crime tactic. The gang members then allegedly took over vacant apartments. According to the document, moved families into those units and started collecting rent. The law firm says this is a picture of gang members breaking into a vacant apartment so they could move a Venezuelan family in and then collect rent. This is our business plan, one gang member told a housekeeper. If he, the property manager, doesn't like it, we'll fill him with bullets. There are reports of this Venezuelan gang in Colorado, Illinois, and Texas. And according to a recent Dr. Phil interview with retired special agent with U.S. immigration, Victor Avia, this is all being done by design. Venezuela, by the way, has the lowest murder rate ever right now. What does that tell you? Yeah, all the murderers are gone. They're here. Yeah. So is it true that they're empty in prisons? I mean, is this, this is not, Cuba this is, all over this again? This is not. This is not a hearsay. There was a memo by DHS last year admitting that, in fact, they knew that Venezuela's government was emptying their prison and rehabilitation centers or drug centers, releasing them on purpose because they knew with instructions to make, if you were going to get out, you're going to make your way to the U.S. That is not, we're not making that up. That, 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 that's true. It was, it was reported on and DHS admitted that that was happening. And in fact, it has. El Tren de Aragua is heavily present in our country now. Okay, so you're telling me that DHS has acknowledged that Venezuela, for example, is empty in their prisons and their rehabilitation centers with the understanding you get out if you leave here and go to the United States. Yes. And DHS has in writing said, we know that's happening, we know they're coming here, we're processing them in and have no idea where they are. Correct. How many people are we talking about? Millions. And just Venezuela alone. Authorities have identified the four people who died in yesterday's mass shooting at a high school in Georgia. The victims, two students and two teachers. The 14-year-old accused gunman is expected to be charged with murder and tried as an adult. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. A teenager is now behind bars in the first deadly K-12 school shooting in Georgia in 25 years. I never imagined that I would be speaking to the media in my career over something that happened today, the pure evil that happened today. 
Officials say the suspect, 14-year-old Colt Gray, killed two fellow students, two teachers, and injured nine others at Appalachie High School Wednesday morning. The victims identified as 14-year-old students Christian Angulo and Mason Shermerhorn. Math teachers Richard Aspinall, who was also a coach on the football team, and Christina Irami. The guns sound like, like balloon popping, but like, 10 times louder. You can see students evacuated by officers. I saw like my math teacher and um, he was all covered. I saw blood everywhere. Well, there was a moment where I'm like, I might die today. Just last week, teachers were given a device that can alert the sheriff's department in an emergency. The school resource officer is responding, finding the suspect with an AR-15 style rifle. They say he surrendered without incident. The shooter quickly realized that if he did not give up, that it would end with an OIS, or an officer involved shooting. He gave up, got on the ground. In May of last year, the FBI received anonymous tips about online threats to shoot up a school. The FBI traced the threatening posts on a gaming site to a then 13-year-old. At the time of the threats, the local sheriff questioned the teen and his father, who denied making the posts, and said that while he kept hunting guns in the house, his son did not have unsupervised access to them and found no reason to arrest him. Investigators have been searching the suspect's home and interviewing his parents as they say they are trying to determine a motive. Another big question right now, how he got his hands on a gun in the first place. Authorities say he will be charged with murder and tried as an adult. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Following more breaking news, we have a really sad update out of a Baltimore area high school. The Harford County Sheriff's Department announcing just a short time ago that the 15 year old boy shot today in the bathroom at Joppa Town High School has died and that the 16 year old suspect will be charged as an adult in this case. The sheriff says the shooting happened around 1230 this afternoon. It stemmed from a fight between those two students. 15 year old Warren Grant was flown to a trauma center, but he died from those injuries. Just a short time ago, we heard from the principal of Joppa Town High School, Melissa Williams. First and foremost, our, our thoughts and prayers are with the family of this amazing young man, with his friends, with all of our staff members, with all of our students. Joppa Town is an, a loving and strong community who will, without a doubt, rally among our families, support one another, and continue to support our community. According to the sheriff, the 16 year old suspect had escaped to some nearby houses. He was arrested within minutes thanks to help from the community.